हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट वेलकम इन गेट 2023 वन शॉट सीरीज सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मिलिंग एंड ग्राइंडिंग माय डियर स्टूडेंट इन मिलिंग यू आर गोइंग टू सी दैट दिस इज अ मिलिंग कटर एंड मिलिंग कटर इज व्हाट मिलिंग कटर बेसिकली दिस मिलिंग कटर इज अ मल्टी पॉइंट इज अ मल्टी पॉइंट कटिंग टूल सी हेयर दिस इज अ मल्टी पॉइंट कटिंग टूल माई डियर आई एम गोइंग I am going to discuss the silent feature of the milling cutter. Basically, milling cutter is going to produce grooves and flutes. Milling cutter is going to produce grooves, grooves and flutes, grooves and flutes. Okay, in in various tool like drill, tapes, reamers, hops, and gear shaping cutter and gear shaping cutter. राइट एंड गियर शेपिंग कटर मिलिंग आर बेसिकली आर ऑफ आर ऑफ टू टाइप दैट इज दैट इज द वन इज दैट इज योर कन्वेंशनल मिलिंग दिस इज वॉट दिस इज कन्वेंशनल मिलिंग आई विल शो यू आई विल शो यू अनदर फिगर सी दिस इज द कन्वेंशनल मिलिंग इन अ कन्वेंशनल मिलिंग द डायरेक्शन ऑफ योर मिलिंग कटर द डायरेक्शन ऑफ योर मिलिंग कटर and the direction of the table are in what are in opposite direction okay are in opposite direction and in the perif in the climb milling the direction of the milling cutter okay and the table is speed or the work piece is speed or work piece feed direction is the same my dear this is the milling cutter right this is what this is the milling cutter this is the milling cutter teeth one 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let's say i'm going to take the number of number of teeth i'm going to take number of teeth number of teeth of the milling cutter let's say z i'm going to take 10 here it is 10, 8 but i'm going to round off let's say 10 here you can see when the milling cutter comes in contact with the work piece the work piece will move along with the milling cutter uh, milling cutter teeth that is feed per tooth that is feed per tooth that is known as what feed per tooth fz right fz that is feed per tooth let's say one teeth of the milling cutter moves along the table okay 0.1 mm per tooth 0.1 mm per tooth and how many teeth are there 10 means in one revolution 10 teeth when 10 teeth comes in a contact with the work piece then the table will move up to a certain value that is what feet that is fz into z it will come what 1 mm per revolution 1 mm per revolution right that is 1 mm per revolution right suppose that if you know the rpm that is revolution per minute if you know the rpm can you find out the table speed yes you can find out the table speed that table speed equal to what f into n that is the table speed that will be in mm per minute my dear that will be in mm per minute clear that will be in mm per minute now this is the same thing which i have discussed my dear uh, milling operation are of various kind this is a peripheral milling here you can see the axis of rotation here you can see this is the axis of rotation and this is what a finished surface this is what a finished surface right this is what a finished surface here the axis of rotation is parallel to finished surface that's why it is known as peripheral milling here you can see this is axis of rotation right this is the axis of rotation this axis of rotation is parallel to what is parallel to again your finished surface that's why again it is a peripheral milling my dear there is a face milling also let me show you the face milling a face milling it will be look like this a face milling will be look like this this is your work piece okay look this is your work piece this is your work piece here this is your work piece this is your work piece okay this is your work piece right and my dear here i am going to draw a milling cutter i am going to draw a milling cutter c c this is what this is a milling cutter here the milling cutter teeth 
here the milling cutter t this is a milling cutter and this is a arbor about which the milling is going to be what rotated about which the milling is going to what about which the milling is going to be what rotated right it is going to be what rotated now you can see the axis of rotation is perpendicular to what the finish surface the finish surface right finish surface so that is known as what face milling that is known as face milling right that is known as what face milling right here this is known as what peripheral 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 milling operation that is known as my dear peripheral milling operation right peripheral milling operation face milling operation is clear when the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the to the finish surface that is known as what face milling now there are various type of milling operation my dear there are various type of milling operation one by one i am going to discuss these type of milling operation right so the first milling operation which you are going to see is known as what straddle is known uh, is known as what straddle this is what this is let's say first this is let's say first that is straddle it is what as form milling this is known as third that is slotting this is known as fourth that is what slitting so my dear here the straddle milling here you can see a straddle a straddle milling a straddle milling my dear in a straddle milling this is basically a arbor arbor is basically a shaft about which you can mount a about which you can mount a about which you can mount a milling cutter so this is the axis of rotation right and this is the arbor you can see and on the arbor we are going to mount two milling cutter which has some separation uh, in a gap the machining is not going to happen but where the milling cutter is present the machining is going to happen there right now the second is what the second is form milling form milling my dear form milling my dear form milling what is the form milling my dear you can see in the form milling this is again the axis of rotation that is a arbor on arbor we are going to mount a tool a mount a milling cutter by which when you do a cutting the shape of the milling cutter is going to produce on the work piece that is known as what form tool and form milling cutter the third is your slotting the third is your slotting by using this milling cutter we are going to produce a slot in a particular work piece right and the fourth is and the fourth is what the slitting my dear by using the slitting type of milling cutter you are going to separate out you are going to cut out a plate or sheet you are going to cut out or separate out a sheet now let's discuss about the milling cutter velocity my dear let me discuss about the velocity of the milling cutter suppose that this is the suppose that this is the suppose that this is a milling cutter having a diameter having and diameter having and diameter d and it is rotating about with the rpm n then what will be the um, uh, cutting velocity diameter with a uh, with uh, in uh, diameter in the mm diameter in the mm so cutting velocity equal to what pi d n divide by 1000 if d is in the mm then you can get the cutting velocity right yes so initially the milling cutter is here okay the milling cutter is here having a diameter d right and this is the length of the work piece which is going to what machine right this is a position one and that much depth i have to cut what that much depth i have to cut this is the entire work piece when the table moves from here to here it is going to cover a entire length l but still you can see still you can see this is the remaining material and this is the remaining material which is not cut yet here the table move by length l right so this is the remaining material which has to be cut let's say this is the approach distance by which a milling cutter has to move so that the entire work piece is going to be what machine right the entire work piece is going to be what machine this is what d by 2 this is what d by 2 d by 2 right and this is what this is d by 2 minus depth of cut so we can calculate this much a how much this a this a is very simple this a is that is what d by 2 right d by 2 
होल स्क्वायर माइनस डी बाई टू माइनस ऑफ स्मॉल डी होल स्क्वायर इट कम्स अबाउट इट कम्स आउट माई डियर दैट इज रूट ऑफ स्मॉल डी कैपिटल डी माइनस स्मॉल डी नाउ हेयर द मिलिंग कटर विल रीच हेयर बाय 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 ट्रेवलिंग दैट मच डिस्टेंस ए सो द टोटल लेंथ द टोटल लेंथ ट्रेवल बाय द टेबल इज वॉट द टोटल लेंथ ट्रेवल बाय द टेबल इज वॉट दैट इज ओके दैट मच आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट ए so this is a and this is what this is l so this is the total length which is moved by the table my dear this is the essential length this is the required length this is what a required length this is what a required length which is required to machine a work piece but is still the milling cutter here the machining is completed here the machining is completed my dear here the machining is completed but still the milling cutter is touching the work piece so we have to move the milling cutter that is the over travel my dear if the over travel is not given to you then move the milling cutter by same distance a so the total machining length so the total machining length will be l plus a plus a that is a over travel distance if it is not given then take a same a that is what over travel distance right over travel distance or 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 uh, yes over travel distance or clearance distance right now what will be the machining time then then the machining time will be that is lt divided by fm lt that is l plus 2a divided by that is fz into z into n right now let me discuss you about the uncut chip thickness in the milling right uncut chip thickness in milling okay my dear in milling operation there will be a maximum uncut chip chip thickness at the uh, uh, one end that is t not max and the value of maximum uncut chip thickness is twice of fz root of small d by capital d the minimum uncut chip thickness the minimum uncut chip thickness is zero so the average uncut chip thickness is what t not max t not max t not min divided by Two, it comes about fz root of small d by capital D in mm. Right. So remember this thing. Now let's discuss about the facing time. Let let discuss about the machining time in what in the in the face milling operation, my dear. That is your that is your milling cutter, right? That is your milling cutter. Okay. Now. this is my work piece this is my here you can see this is my okay this is my work piece okay which is going to be mill here you can see the width of the work piece here you can see that is the width of the work piece okay is smaller than the diameter of what milling cutter so in one pass we are going to machine the work piece and the length of the work piece and the length of the work piece is what that is what that is a is l right now when the table is going to move when the table is going to what when the table is going to move my dear see here this is a milling cutter again this is a milling cutter again now when the table is going to move right up to l distance is the milling completed here the table move the l distance is still the milling is not completed why you can see here there is the that much material is remaining which is symmetrical about the which is symmetrical about the this axis this axis of what symmetry so it means that much distance the milling cutter has to move or table has to move so what is that a you can find this a in a very easy manner that is what that is d by 2 right that is what d by 2 and that is what that is w by 2 can you find this length yes we can find this length this length 
okay that a how can i find that a still this is what my dear d by 2 so from this length minus this length so that a will be comes out that a will be comes out d by 2 okay minus d by 2 whole square minus w by 2 whole square right so this is the required distance which the milling cutter has to move has to move right now here you can see now this will be the final okay now this will be the this thing see now the machining is what machining is completed now here that uh, machining length is what the total machining length is that is l plus a now the machining time you can find out that is what that is the machining length divided by what table feet clear simple na very simple now let's discuss some question my dear this is a question please see a cutter has a eight teeth that is z equal to what eight rotating with the rpm what 150 so n is what 150 if the feet per tooth that is f z equal to 0.1 mm per tooth right then you have to find the table speed table speed is what that is fm f z into z into rpm so f z is what that is f z is what f z is given to us f z is f z is 0.1 right z is what 8 rpm is what rpm is 150 my dear it will become 120 mm per minute 120 mm per minute clear 120 mm per minute now a uh, next question data for plane milling operation plane milling generally what a face milling sorry peripheral milling peripheral milling peripheral milling peripheral milling right peripheral milling now here the length of the work piece is what l cutter diameter is d number of teeth that is z cutter speed that is rpm is given feet that is fm is given depth of cut that is small d is given total clearance entry and exit is given mean and deform chip thickness mean and deform chip thickness that is a average chip thickness you have to find that is fz root of small d by capital d my dear you have to find the small uh, fz so here fm equal to fz into z into rpm fm equal to what fm equal to given that is 200 fz into number of teeth that is 4 into rpm that is what how much that is that is that is 100 right so fz will become 0.5 mm per tooth right 0.5 mm per tooth now t not average mean and deform chip thickness is 0.5 root of small d that is what depth of cut that is 2 divided by diameter of the cutter that is 100 okay it will be comes in mm but he is asking in micron so nearby it will be come 71 micron 71 micron it will be come right now the next is the machining time for a single pass you have to find here total clearance entry and exit is given the thing is that i told you already my dear i told you already here basically what is going to happen this is a work piece right this is a work piece and 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 you have to machine this work piece right you have to machine this work piece here my dear student here you can see this is the entry that is x is given right this is the machining length that is l is given now tool has to travel now basically the required the required machining length is what l plus a here x is given that is a approach now over travel that is clearance okay that is what clearance it is given to us that is what clearance that is given to us this is what this is let's say y that is clearance let's say y and x plus y equal to what that is 5 l is what l is given to what that is 200 that is what 200 right a x plus y that is what 5 what is a here a you can find a that is root of small d capital d minus small d root of small d that is 2 capital d 100 minus 2 it will become what 14 mm right it will become 14 mm my dear now once you get the a so add here 
14 14 so 200 plus 14 plus 5 so it will become 219 mm right 219 mm now we have to need the machining time that is lm machining length that is 219 divide by what divide by 200 mm per minute 200 mm per minute so here the answer comes here minute but 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 the given answer is given in the second so 219 divided by 200 answer into 60 it comes 65.7 second right that is approximated as 66 second now we are going to start a grinding operation right grinding as a finishing basically grinding is what grinding generally is a finishing operation right now let me discuss with the grinding my dear grinding basically in conventional machining grinding is a process grinding is a process which has a maximum specific energy right which has a maximum specific energy right why let me give you the explanation this is a grinding wheel and this is the abrasive particle this is a abrasive particle this is a abrasive particle right grinding is what multi point cutting tool multi point cutting multi point cutting tool grinding is what multi point cutting tool and these tool these are what these are generally negative rake angle i to, i am going to tell you generally these are what low rake angle low rake angle low rake angle okay low rake angle these grit these are what these are known as grit these are known as grit and these grit or abrasive particle has low rake angle and you know the concept as the low low as the rake angle is low then the cutting force increases then then here every grit is going to do a machining operation means the cutting force is going to increase in a very high manner also in a low cutting rake angle the required cutting velocity required cutting velocity required cutting velocity is what is high because low rake angle tool are not able to penetrate into the work piece so that's why power consumption is going to be increases that's why a lot of heat is going to be produced in the grinding operation here you can see is a grinding wheel and here in the grinding wheel you can see that a grinding okay grit that a grinding grit grinding grit see see this is a grinding grit see this is a grinding grit see this is a grinding grit generally grinding grit has what a low rake angle now this space is known as inter grit space inter grit space okay inter grit space generally in inter grit space the chip is going to be accommodated here cutting fluid is going to be accommodated here okay this is a pocket of what cutting fluid right this is a pocket for what a cutting fluid okay this is a pocket of what a cutting fluid as i told you why we require a high cutting velocity why we require a high cutting velocity in the grinding it is desired to offset the adverse effect of it is desired to offset the adverse effect of very high negative rake angle and low rake angle of the working grid to reduce the force per, uh, per grid as well as overall grinding force right otherwise the grid is not going to be penetrate into the work piece right the grid is not going to penetrate into the work piece my dear you have to remember some of the very important thing okay in this operation for a gate purpose for a gate for a gate exam you have to remember some few point which is very important okay in terms of grinding in grinding some of the parameter are high like rake angle rake angle may be highly positive highly zero or highly negative right but mostly low rake angle we are going to be found here in grinding the required cutting velocity is very high because we have to overcome the adverse effect of negative or low rake angle here the specific cutting energy is going to be what very high even there are some parameter which are very low and what are they here we keep low feed rate here we keep low feed rate okay because of because of low rake angle the shear the shear angle is also low 
my dear we have already seen that because of the low rake angle the the grit are not able to okay penetrate into the work piece that's why we need a high cutting velocity and because of the high cutting velocity and because of the low rake angle the overall power consumption is going to be increases so we are not going to we are not able to we are not going we here we are not going to increase the depth of cut why because if you are going to increase the depth of cut in that case then what happen then what happen my dear if you increase the depth of cut my dear then power consumption again is going to be increases okay which is not very economical which is not very economical now what is the g ratio what is a g ratio my dear this is a grinding wheel right this is what this is a work piece okay suppose that during machining some of the material is going to be removed some of the material 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 removed or mrr material removed from wheel from wheel okay while machining and material removed and material removed from work piece from work piece during what during machining so g ratio basically material removed material removed from work piece wp stand for work piece divide by material removed from wheel from wheel right from wheel that is a g ratio let me tell you about the grinding ratio let me tell you some fact about the grinding ratio my dear in conventional grinding in conventional grinding the g ratio is in the range of 20 is to 1 to 80 is to 1 the g ratio is a measure the g ratio is a measure of grinding production and reflects the amount of and reflects the amount of what amount of work amount of work a wheel can do during its useful life during its useful life as a wheel losses material it must be reset or uh, repositioned repositioned to maintain the work piece size right to maintain the work piece size right there are this is a very important slide my dear by this parameter you can you can basically decide that which grinding wheel we have to use basically in grinding two types of grinding can be done a rough grinding or a finishing grinding in rough grinding we have to take other uh, some type of uh, other wheel in finished grinding we have to select some uh, some type of other wheel right so by which parameter you can decide that for rough grinding we will select that wheel for uh, finished grinding we will select that wheel right so here are some parameter which tells about a lot right there are basically five main parameter the first parameter is what the type of grit material my dear yes the type of grit material what are the type of grit material okay what type of material basically the grit basically we select like it is not going to be react with the work piece at a very high temperature generally silicon carbide and aluminum oxide right the grit size yes the size of the grit may be large and the size of the grit will be low if the size of the grit is large is large then material removal capacity is high if the material removal capacity if the size of grit is c o c o a r s e corus means large then mrr is large mrr produced by this grit is what large means this type of grit we will recommend in rough wheel rough grinding wheel rough grinding rough grinding wheel right if we are going to select a fine grit this is what fine grit then mrr produced by this grit is low then this type of grit we are going to use in finish wheel in finish wheel right in finish wheel now let me tell you the next parameter that is a bond strength of the wheel commonly known as what wheel hardness that that parameter tells that how how much tightly 
द एब्रेसिव पार्टिकल आर होल्ड इन द व्हील राइट हाउ मच टाइटली द एब्रेसिव पार्टिकल आर होल्ड इन द वर्क पीस फोर्थ पैरामीटर इज स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द व्हील यस ओपन स्ट्रक्चर और कोरस स्ट्रक्चर माय डियर यू हैव सीन यू हैव सीन दैट यू हैव सीन दिस व्हील पोरोसिटी बेसिकली इंटरग्रिट स्पेस इंटरग्रिट स्पेस इफ द इंटरग्रिट स्पेस इज लार्ज देन द व्हील इज then the wheel is what oh, you can say open density okay the open basically <coughs> intricate space is high then then its density is low if the intricate space is low okay or the space in between the grid is low then the wheel is known as what dense generally in the fine if you use a fine grid then the intricate space is what less in that case the wheel is what less but if you use a If you use a coarse grid, then the intergrid space is high. Then the wheel is what open structure. The wheel is known as what open structure. Otherwise, it is dense structure. If the space is what very fine, if the space is what very less. Fifth is the type of bonding material which you are using. Suffix and prefix we use <coughs> to define the lots, uh, the lot of the wheel in which in which they are going to be manufactured. <coughs> My dear, dear student. here this prefix and suffix is not useful for us what i told you first parameter told you the type of abrasive particle a abrasive uh, particle that is a aluminum oxide instead of a suppose that if c is written then we are using silicon carbide as a abrasive particle at the second position a uh, second position we get the information about the grid size yes this number if this number is going to be increases then the grid size is going to be reduces if this number is going to be reduces then the grid size is going to be what increases again i am going to repeat if this number is going to be increases then the grid size is going to be reduces this grid become finer very easy if this number is going to be increases it means grid become finer if this size is going to be reduces if this number is going to be reduces then grid become coarse now at the third position what is that grit that is wheel hardness wheel hardness tells that the bond strength of the wheel okay how much tightly abrasive particle are hold in the grinding wheel right so that letter will tell uh, tell us about the hardness if the letter below l then the wheel is what low if the letter is crosses the l or if the any letter will uh, find okay uh, that side of the l then the wheel become what hard or few you can simply say if you go from l to a then the wheel become soft if you go from l to z then the wheel become hard right the next parameter will tell you the uh, structure of the wheel okay structure of the wheel that is what that is porosity the amount of intricate space okay if the amount of intricate space is high then it is open structure if the amount of intricate space is less that is that is it is a dense structure so here number the number is going to when the number is going to increase let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then it is going to open it is going to open when the number is going to decrease then it is going to dense right now the last parameter will going to tell you the type of bond which you are going to use to hold the abrasive particle v stand for vitrified right v stand for vitrified instead of v suppose that if s is written then s means silicate bond we are using instead of s suppose that suppose that if r is uh, written here then the rubber type of bond we are using here instead of if here b is written then resinoid bond we are using here instead of b if e is written then shellac bond is uh, shellac material as a bond shellac bonding material is using here if o is written then oxychloride is using as a bonding material right as a bonding material so this is a very important slide please remember this slide right now what is a centerless grinding my dear centerless grinding is a process where we are not going to mount the wheel we are not going to mounting a wheel right basically what is going to happen in a centerless grinding let me show you in a centerless grinding there is a wheel okay there is a wheel let me show you there is a wheel 
this is a this is a first wheel okay this is a first wheel right this is a first wheel let's say this is a axis of rotation there is a another wheel which is little bit inclined okay which is little bit inclined which is little bit inclined let's see see here which is little bit inclined right which is little bit inclined see which is little bit inclined which is little bit inclined centerless grinding okay now this is grinding wheel 1 this is grinding wheel 1 and this is grinding wheel 2 if you see from that side if you see from that side or that side the wheel will be look like this the wheel will be basically look like this let me tell you let me show you let me show you this wheel see this wheel right another wheel this wheel number 1 wheel number 2 right in between a work piece comes here in between a work piece will comes here in between a work piece will come here right which is placed at the rest plate now what is going to happen this grinding wheel is going to be what rotate because of the inclination between the wheel whatever be the work piece my dear whatever be the work piece this will rotate this will what rotate this will rotate and move a linear motion right this work piece will rotate okay and moves a linear motion right that is what your centerless grinding right that is what your centerless grinding here the work piece is not going to be okay here the work piece is not going to be what uh, uh, here the work piece is not going to be mount anywhere okay one of them here wheel number 1 basically a grinding wheel this is a grinding wheel right this is a grinding wheel one of them is a grinding wheel and it is a regulating wheel regulating wheel regulating wheel right regulating wheel basically this regulating wheel will give will regulate the rpm of this work piece okay so that the work piece is going to be rotated and move in the forward direction because of the inclination the centerless grinding basically is going to uh, save our lot of time which is going to be consumed in mounting the work piece okay there is no need to mount the work piece in the lathe okay you can do directly a turning a surface grinding operation okay okay then thank you